Hey guys, welcome to another Tech Age video. This one is going to be a little bit simpler than some of our previous videos, but it's for a subject I've been wanting to talk about for a while. When Final Fantasy XV's Windows version came out a couple of months ago, I felt really annoyed by the fact that the game didn't support SLI out of the box. It was especially annoying when you realize the game supports many other technologies by Nvidia, such as Ansel and Gameworks. Now, despite the fact that I've been doing the Tech Age thing for about 13 years now, I somehow didn't ever catch the fact that fake SLI profiles were actually a thing. After complaining about the lack of SLI support in the game to a friend, he gave me a link to a forum thread with a profile that gave me just what I was after. And, as this video exists, you can probably take a guess as to my success. Before diving into how this works, I want to say that while this video is specific to Final Fantasy XV, it's more the capability I'm interested in talking about. Fake SLI in this particular title isn't perfect, but it very well could be in other titles. Now that I know fake SLI exists, I'll be more interested in going forward and checking out demanding games that lack multi-GPU support to see if someone out there has created a profile. And tying into that, I don't know what Crossfire users need to do for multi-GPU support in this game, and I don't have the duplicate Radeon card here to test. Neither AMD or Nvidia care much about multi-GPU gaming right now, so we're really at the mercy of hacks. On the Nvidia side, using a fake SLI profile is much easier than I would have expected. Aside from the profile itself, the key ingredient to these tweaks is the Nvidia Profile Inspector tool. This piece of software unfortunately doesn't seem to have an official website, but many different websites host it. The version of the software I used here was 2.13, so if you try this out, you'll want to make sure you have at least that version. As for the profile itself, I'll toss a link into the description. After opening Nvidia Profile Inspector, the first thing you'll want to do is access the drop down menu and scour the massive list for Final Fantasy XV Windows Edition, making sure you don't accidentally choose the standalone benchmark entry. From here, you can see many different bits of information, which is the same pool of information the Nvidia driver pulls from when you launch a game. It's also here where adjustments can be made to trick a game into supporting SLI. With the profile in view, you can click the icon up top that lets you import a profile, search for it, and then open it. If done correctly, you should see some of the values in the windows change. Notably in this case, the SLI compatibility bits line for DirectX 11 games changed from a random list to a hexadecimal value. I'm not going to pretend that I understand what that ultimately changes, but I do know that it made a difference for me in the game. After importing the profile, you'll want to click the apply box at the top to make sure it actually sticks once you close the profiler tool. Since it's a little difficult to appreciate the differences in a compressed YouTube video, I enabled a frame rate counter overlay which will easily show the differences before and after the fake SLI profile is put into place, though calling it a fake profile might not be appropriate considering the fact that it actually works. What you've been watching in the background here is game performance on a single Titan XP at 4K with the game's graphics completely maximized, which means the enabling of every Nvidia Gameworks feature found in the options. Clearly, the performance is a bit lacking, dipping to 30 frames per second often, and peaking at about 45. By comparison, here's the SLI performance. With our so-called fake SLI, it's not hard to spot immediate performance boosts, at least based on the counter in the corner. What I can say is that while playing the games hands-on, the difference is much more noticeable. With a single GPU, we peaked at 45 frames per second, whereas that's the minimum frame rate of the dual GPU configuration. Even in the most grueling of scenes, the SLI profile smooths things out considerably. Look no further than a water section of this dungeon, much easier to appreciate with a side-by-side -side view. With a single GPU, this part of the dungeon is unbelievably laggy, whereas the dual GPU configuration completely smooths it out. There's no such thing as not noticing the difference here if you're playing. It goes from console level performance to fluid gameplay even in the roughest of spots. To give even more perspective on the performance gains here, I tested two separate instances in the game with and without SLI to deliver some real numbers. The first test is a simple autonomous drive from the Vesper Pool at the top of the map down to Golden Quay Beach to the south. That takes just under 7 minutes to complete, whereas the second scene was an outdoor battle that took under 4 minutes. With a single GPU, the game struggles to surpass 40 frames per second, whereas the dual GPU configuration makes 70 FPS the minimum. Ultimately, the average frame rate for the single GPU configuration in this run was 35 frames per second, whereas the dual GPU configuration spiked at about 80% to hover around 63 frames per second on average. A mere drive from point A to B might not seem demanding, but because of the zoomed out view, a lot more needs to be rendered on a given screen than if you are active in battle, which is generally done very close up. 
In the other set of results, we see even better performance overall from both configurations. The single GPU hits 40 frames per second on average, while the G dual GPU configuration yet again proves more than 80% boost to land at 74 frames per second on average. Ultimately, these results are not that important to analyze because there are only two for comparison, and the differences are clearly in the favor of the dual GPU setup. Up to this point, I've been pretty much doling out praise for the fake SLI in this game, but I'd be lying if I said the entire thing has been bug-free. I've personally put about 40 hours of SLI play into Final Fantasy XV, and while there are occasional glitches, they're a lot more tolerable in comparison to constantly weak frame rates. Here, you can see one of the most noticeable bugs with SLI. Essentially, it appears like two separate images are not being combined properly, likely due to the fact that there is no official SLI profile, and we're instead tricking the driver into making it work at all. Generally speaking, I've mostly encountered this kind of issue only after a fresh game load. The only real solution I found is to play with the oddity until it disappears on its own, which did happen in every single one of my experiences. Sometimes it takes 10 seconds to disappear, other times it might take 2 minutes. I'll also say that SLI performance seems to be a little more sporadic with the Windows 10 April update, although I'm not entirely certain that's the sole issue. I recently completed the game, and it was near the end where I felt the worst detriment to the SLI setup. In some cases, the game would lag horrifically, which seemed to be helped if I temporarily went to windowed mode. Ultimately, the performance degradation made it feel like there was a memory leak somewhere, as it actually made my game crash on two occasions within this one hour span. Chances are I would have fared a little bit better if the graphics were lower, but I can't say for certain. So while I have encountered certain issues with the fake SLI in this game, the benefits have far outweighed the negatives for me, and if what I experience here is the extent of the hassle that I'd have to deal with in other games, I'd consider it to be worth it overall, as long as the performance is actually needed. I consider 60 frames per second to be a requirement, so 30 to 40 frames per second on a single GPU wasn't going to do. In the absolute worst case, I'd just drop down the graphics detail and use a single GPU, but in this case, I could maximize the use of two cards, so it made sense to max out the graphics detail. I am not at all suggesting anyone run out and buy an SLI setup for this game, or really any game in particular. More than ever, SLI is for those who really don't mind spending lots of money for little bits of gain, or absolutely none in select titles. When multi-GPU is utilized properly, the gains are enormous, but unfortunately, support is seriously lacking. Hopefully that will change with the next GeForce and Radeon series, but I have my doubts. And with that, if anyone out there has experience with fake SLI profiles, or even fake Crossfire profiles, please leave a comment and let us know which games you've had success with. This video was in no way meant to be definitive, it was more just to get it out there that such capabilities exist, since I was personally very slow to give fan-created SLI profiles a try. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe as there is lots more in store. Thank you very much for watching.